so we're going to talk about what is a, a pocket, what's a pocket used for, how a pocket was created, why we, we emphasis um, trying to figure out on with clients is if there was an area set aside on one of those designs that they have either you know labeled off an area themselves or someone else has came in and said you know this area is what you need to kind of drew a circle around it that pizza pie effect if you will um, what, what do you do in those areas the, the, the pockets are can be used in a couple of different uh, terms that connect to the word pockets I guess uh, one is in a timber setting where you're opening up pockets throughout your property and you're letting that uh, you know that sunlight hit them areas and regenerate only in those areas so you get some diversity diversity pockets if you will all around your property well uh, we're going to talk about the the connection that I have with those pockets and how I make my um, make my designs in those pockets and what those pockets are and then we're also going to talk about the switchgrass setting so that's the timber side of it and then the switchgrass setting is what pockets what uh, you can implement into a pocket what is you know what's the power of having a pocket especially in switchgrass uh, so what, what I've done here guys I've laid out the um, similar of a design that we had just just uh, some time ago here and you always hear you know obviously you're trying to you're trying to get uh, behind you know behind the doors you want to hunt behind the doors well that's a very powerful uh, uh, outlook on a design there's some situations that arise though that we start dealing with you know uh, we start dealing with um, old set aside farms uh, fields well those fields and a lot of times and this will you know maybe connect with a bunch of you watching here is a lot of times those fields are the first are the most easiest or the lower level of your farm so you those let's say you buy a, a farm that was uh, old cattle pasture well a lot of that is adjacent to the road you know, it's not it's not in the center of the of the property. So, what do you do with those areas? And that's what we're going to talk about as far as you know, putting those into switchgrass, putting those into production. As I say, you know, some of that is uh, taking ag out, but it's uh, ag out and putting into a, you know more of a switchgrass, a more habitat, uh, steady habitat. That happens a lot. You think about it as you drive down a county road next time and you're looking at, you know, as I do, I always look at properties, hey, that's a that's a really nice whitetail property or, you know, driving past it, you look at these abandoned fields and they're adjacent to the to the road. So there there has to be something you can do to it. So it's not always, you're not always going to find these perfect properties that have that, that uh, uh, center core. Um, that you can do everything on. That's the goal. That's what we try to make because it, it adds to the the uh, it adds to the core of your property. But this situation here is a perfect example where this is actually an old. It was an old homestead at one time, and we're you know we put a food plot in because this drops off about you know 60 80 feet to the bottom level bottom tier of the farm, and so you know main road here, main road on the outside. In order to utilize this piece, now there's no. You, you, we couldn't, we're taking so much of the value away from potential uh, buck bedding interior that we had to do something here with this. So what this left us with, and this ties into the pockets, what this left us with was a switchgrass area. Now, just to kind of explain this design to you, so we're going to have two things. We're going to talk about the timber pockets, and then we're going to talk about switchgrass. Let's start, start with switchgrass. So I've laid this out to kind of help speed this process up a little bit. So we've got road and access on the uh, south and on the west side here and this uh, was all this whole corner um, this whole piece here was the whole southwest corner let's say uh, was left and abandoned years ago with an old homestead in here and there's actually an old tractor shed here so uh, but right here on the edge is a timber line that before it goes over a you know 60 80 foot drop to the bottom and so it's very it's very secluded here uh, there's a lot of room to put some to put some uh, you know into into production as plots and some bedding, but it's not your typical you know um, bedding internal. So this is one of those situations that really arises this this uh, hub style bedding and these pockets of this the, this video. This video isn't mainly about the bedding area, but it's about what you what do you do with the pockets. So here you know what we went through is we always have those three. Um, those three uh, points in a in a uh, you know entrances into a food plot on this these hubs so i was able to go in and we connected these you know connected this hub out like this if you will 
and now by doing that this leg of this this came down and came, comes all the way through the switchgrass pocket right to our point of impact so this one here actually wraps around and comes right back out and hits here so now what we've created is we have created kind of that that maze of that pocket effect in here so this is all dough this is all dough bedding on all of these all of these pockets and now we've got a what, what do we do with those pockets you know the, the whole reason to this video well in these pockets guys and we're going to blow this up here a little bit we got a, a left a spot up here in the corner but in these pockets is what you want to you know in to create these pockets in the switchgrass is you come down off from these these uh these art the corridors inside of these hubs or any bedding and you poke holes out into these that are really secluded you know that you're five and eight foot wide uh, so you're still getting some daylight you get out here to them and then that's where these pockets start to uh, form you know that you come out here on these trails and this is how you uh, you know you get this uh, more of a grid and usable pockets for uh, internal of these bedding bedding areas so we're just going to block this area off right here guys and we're going to zoom in here so we can really you know uh, blow one of these up to so you can see so as this, if this is your, this line, you know, taking this out now, let's focus up here on the drawing. You know, if this is your corridor and you're pulling your pocket off from, off from up in here, you know, five, five to eight feet wide, you're mowing a spot in here, uh, or you're, you're, you know, the grid is already laid out that you're, you are, uh, you dissed it in and then you planted the switchgrass around it, whichever way that you accomplish that. Uh, there's pros and cons about both of those. But uh, if you, you know, you put these, put these uh, court or these, yeah, these tight corridors, five to eight feet wide, five foot wide usually, and then you get to these hubs, you can cut these hubs out of the, the switchgrass, and now you have a, you have a wall of switchgrass, real thick density of switch all the way around these areas, and it's, it creates this, this pocket. Well, inside of these pockets, this is where we place a, uh, a spruce or two or three you know the rule of thumb there is if you want uh, you know two spruce to grow plant three if you want one to grow plant two uh, because the deer will eat them and they're going to die and whatever the case is so we drop those in here then what we do is we come back and we're we're uh, you know trying to get any regeneration in here I've got I've got folks that have uh, you know taken uh, yard cleanings from the city uh, or their yard is themselves out here in the country collected all their leaves taking that leaf debris out there so it's got you know the little um, it's got the uh, helicopters off the uh, the maples it's got uh, everything it's got pine cones all that stuff in there well they have you know just spread that stuff in here uh, hog manure like we talked about you know uh, is creating that ragweed um, or hogweed in here anything to you know diversify from your switch to these and give that some food value um, eventually uh, down the road, if you want to buy, if we, when you're starting these, you can buy uh, brown, uh, you know, you know, your brown dogwood. Dogwood. If this is depending on the area, maybe you could, you know, throw some uh, red osier dogwood in there. Uh, something to give it food value because if it's not, if it's in this grid here, and it's not a, it's not a, uh, it does not have food value. It's not a going to be a strong or if at all a bedding area because they have to re be able to reach those uh, bedding you know the, the, the food requirement internal of their bedding area now what we're going to talk about is the timber um, aspect of it is how this ties to what this looks like in in uh, in a timber setting so same situation on your your bedding layout if you can put a hub in make it make sense um, if you have an area that's you know already uh, if you have an area that's already hinge cut for a bedding area off adjacent to food, well, you go in and make sure that you can, um, the deer can navigate. Um, I, I find a lot of them, like we've talked before, I find a lot of them that are obviously too thick. That's one of the reasons that the deer don't use them. Um, one of the properties I was on a, a couple of weeks ago there, he had the right idea as far as hinge cutting, but he, hint, you know, they were too high of hinge cuts, so we, we talked about how to lower those down to really support that side cover. So, you know, getting away from that canopy. Uh, so cutting these in the same in a timber city setting, using all of your, you know, your uh, corridors leading out to your transition areas at points of impact, same theory, 
But this leaves us with these pockets. How do we do this? Well, to me, I treat it the same way as timber. It's just you're dealing with different, you're dealing with different, um, you know, uh, structure. So in there, what I do, guys, is we, we put these, you know, these same, same situation. We put these uh, trails, these uh, corridors out to these little smaller trails off your corridors out to these pockets. Same theory, out in the timber. But with timber, you're going to have debris, tall debris that you need to, you're not cutting these in the switchgrass that's surrounded by switchgrass, these are surrounded by timber. So obviously you're going to put these hinge cuts. I like to do is I like to put them, you know, try not to box this area completely off, but I just try to follow the, the edge around here. The first thing that I do is I come in and, and we just tip these to the outside. Then what we do is, is there, if once you get the outside rim created, and this might be, you know, these are really uh, small and, um, you know, kind of secluded inside of these, these areas. So it might be only three or four trees when we're talking, you know, uh, doe bedding areas. So this is, uh, so these might be, you know, three, four trees, five trees on the outside. And then, you, you know, maybe take one, put it in the center. So you've got some structure, help the side cover. Then now we're going to implement those those uh, pines in like we did before. So now you've got you know you've got the wind blocks, you've got side cover, uh, you've got conifer, and then in this situation is that's where by opening these areas and in a in a in a bedding uh, a doe bedding situation, these are going to be you know pretty pretty small. These are going to be you know these are going to be in conjunction with other other. Uh, hinge cutting that is done along the way along these uh, corridors. So you're, you're going you're going to you know have a lot of debris down on the ground in this. You're just trying to make these these pockets uh, stand out, make it a real uh, defined, obviously a pocket that you've created there for them. So that's that's how it looks inside of the dough bedding. And that's the reason that you do that in conjunction, like I said, with the rest of your uh, hinge cutting. Now on the buck bedding aspect, when these are outside, these are, let's say this is, this is not the corridor, which we, you know, talked about here. This is actually a transition that is internal of the farm where we're trying to make those secluded uh, buck bedding areas that comes down the outside. Let's say this is your fence row. And then this transition area is working its way down the property. Well, obviously this is that transition that is, you know, up to 20 feet wide. And we're going to label 20 on this. And then these are where these, you know, I might have a, I might have a, uh, a buck icon out here. Well, you know, maybe I've got another one, maybe I've got another one here. Well, these areas are to, to do just that. Instead of just putting a circle around them that you'll see on other, other designs, what I do is I put the buck bedding there so we know that's, that's the object of having the, the uh, buck bed there. And then what we do is you'll see I've got the, the, the red lines that go to some of them uh, to, to really, to really uh, help you promote that that's that five foot, you know, that's that five foot uh, wide trail out to these, out to these uh, areas, these buck bedding areas, these secluded buck bedding areas. And then this is around it is where you'll see what happens with these pockets. And by doing that, as you go in here and you're tipping all the trees to the outside, like we just talked, that is how you you get the you're, you're getting the um, pocket effect. But I like to place those where I know that they're going to be as powerful as we can possibly make them, and that's the rhyme and the reason behind uh, pockets in timber and also in switchgrass guys. So that's what they look like from above. That's what they look like uh, internal. And uh, I hope that helps clarify some because I've ha I have that you know, question often about pockets, about what we what we should do with them, what you shouldn't do with them, what, how strong a pocket really is. And to me, that's that's why you create a a pocket. Um, so hopefully that you know I've had some even some questions of some clients of my own when we we drop these buck icons along the way is you know how big is that pocket? You know this can be 20, 30, you know 40 feet depending on the maturity. Uh, of your of your uh, you know timber in the in the timber pockets it all depends you have to just fit it to what you have now if you've got a real narrow property these are going to be smaller if you got a if this is a larger property and this is spread out more then you can open these up 20 30 40 feet more you open them up obviously 
uh, the more attractive they are because of regeneration. I just really encourage my, my clients not to get those too close to food sources and not to get those uh, these areas that you're trying to make secluded and get these pockets of this diversity. Uh, don't get them too large uh, that you're trying you're going to invite does to the uh, to the uh, design here or to the area and uh, then the does are going to take them over. These are these pocket areas internal of a pro of, of a farm uh, property whether they are uh, whether they are in a switchgrass uh, area and or they are in a timber situation you are focusing these uh, making these pockets for uh, buck bedding areas potential buck bedding areas most of the time that's what the uh, pockets mean to me that's what I try to relate to my clients and that's how we create a line of travel and a flow to connect your uh, property all together through the aid of pockets